Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to place text onto a circle like we have right in here and use that as a basis for making a logo. Very straightforward, but there are a couple of main tricks you have to know for this to work out correctly. Mostly how to get that text viewed correctly at the bottom down here. Normally if you put text on a circle, it just goes clear around and it's upside down at the bottom. I'll show you how to get this right side up. Now if you are a member of my channel, and you have the HTG Photo Coach program. You can get step-by-step -step instructions for this whole project and also download links for this project file and also for the graphics included in here. And I'll explain more about how to get that if you aren't a member right now at the end of this video. So I'll start off with a brand new file. So up here, I'll just do file, blank file. And I'm using the default Photoshop elements size for this one. That's six by four inches at 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK. And I'll be using floating windows, and I'll show you why a little later on in this discussion. But if you don't have floating windows yet, just go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general. And it's this checkbox right here, allow floating documents in advanced mode. Check that one. And while you're here, you might as well go ahead and check the zoom with scroll wheel. If you have a scroll wheel on your mouth, that just makes zooming a lot easier. Choose OK. We can then dock this up here, just put it to the top, see how it kind of changes. Let go, and it's now a docked window. We'll be using that floating in a little bit. Now I'll do control zero to go full screen on that one. Then back over here to this project. I'm gonna close this one down, get this out of our way. It's just right there, there we go. Now I'll start off by putting in a couple of guidelines in here. I have my rulers showing. That's up here under view and rulers right there. And I have this in inches. That's right click, and you can choose that right down here. So I have that inches. Now I wanna have a guideline here right in the center. Let's make sure our guides are showing up here to view. Make sure that guides are checked. They are. And that snap to guides is checked. That should be, these should all be okay already because that's the default setting in Photoshop Elements. Now go over the left-hand ruler, grab the ruler and drag it in. You get a guideline. If you come in close to the center, it's going to snap to the center point right there. Same thing for the top here. Pull it down. It's going to snap right to that center point. It's going to slow at this point and then you'll see it snap right there. Okay, there's our exact center. Let's now put a circle on here, a beginning circle and come down here to the ellipse shape. Yours may look like that with a rectangle on here. Just come down to the options panel, click on the ellipse tool right here, set this at from center, and then set this at fixed size. You can then type in a size right down here. I'm gonna set this one at 2.4 by 2.4. Now if it's at fixed size, all you have to do is just click on the page and it will then give you your circle at that size. And since it's from center, it'll be centered on your cross here. So set our cross here right over the guidelines. This is the only place that has to be just a little bit more exact. And then line up your crosshairs right on top of those guidelines. It looks like the right about here is pretty good. Click, it then makes that circle. Now use the foreground color as the color for the circle and black's fine. We'll be changing this later, so it doesn't really matter. This is the inner part, the picture part of our logo. And then our text goes outside of that. Now I wanna have the text just a little ways off of this circle. So we need to have a new circle up here, make a new layer like that, let's come down here, click on this color swatch, and then choose a new swatch. I'm just gonna choose a medium gray, 35% gray is fine. Any different color is fine for this. We'll change that as well later on. Okay, come down here, let's change the width and the height to 2.5 by 2.5. And again, same thing, come right back onto that center point, just take your time, be real careful with that. Click, now if I bring my opacity down on this about halfway, you can see now I have a little bit of space in there. Our text will go right on that circle, that outer circle, which will then put our text a little ways away from the inner circle. So put this back up to full opacity again. There we are. And then let's go over to the type tool and choose a new color. I have mine at area bold, which is right there. There it is. And I have my type size at 18 point right here. I'm going to change the color. Again, this doesn't matter right now. We'll be changing the color to white later on, but I want to have just something that's just different from that gray. So I'll choose a CMYK cyan. That's okay. All the rest of this can be just the same as it is, except set this at center text right there. Now I'm working in Photoshop Elements 2024 and this automatically gives you placement text. You'll see that in a second. And notice as I take my cursor over here outside, it has a square around it. If I come inside, there's a circle around it. This is text inside of a circle. This is text any place else outside here. If I come right against that edge, let's go over here, get this kind of strange thing with a squiggly line through it. That's text on that circle, on that shape. So let's go over here to the center, align this to the center, and then bring it down until you see that shape right there and click. And then again, in 2024, you get text automatically placed in here. And you can then just change that text to whatever you want. 
if you're in an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, I'll hit the delete key. And what you get is this. You get the insertion cursor blinking right there at the top. Let's just cancel that one and I'll come back in again. And I want to show you one thing about this. When you put text on your circle like this, notice how that text goes upside down at the bottom down there. It doesn't change its direction on the bottom side. Now, if that's what you want, then that's all you have to do. Go ahead, put your text in and you're all ready to go. You're fine. If though you want to have your text reading correctly across the bottom down here, in other words, backwards from this, then we have to do an additional step in here. So this is going to be our top text. I'm going to just leave that with that text on there for right now, just to have it kind of as a placement thing. We'll hide that one. You know, I change what it says here. This is going to be the top text. Let's come down here and make another layer above our shape. This will be our bottom text. There we go. Back to our type tool. Come down to the shape. Back to our same position right here. And the reason why I put another layer in here, that's so this didn't automatically overwrite that text. Let's come right back to the same spot like that. I'll hit the delete key. So this is how it's going to be looking. And let's put in our bottom text. Let's call it beauty from light. We're doing a camera or a photo club. So that works. And hit the check mark and that's now in place. We need to get this from up here down to here. So for that, let's go back to the type tool. Triple click. That selects the type. Now hold the control key down. This is the big secret. And pull it straight down. And see what happens is it snaps from the outside to the inside. Also notice you see the little kind of a line down there. That line shows you the center line. So pull that around. I'm still holding down the control key. Pull it around until that's lined up on your center line. Then let go. And there's a text reading correctly, but it's in the wrong place. It's too far in. We want it outside and not inside. Click outside someplace. And then use the control T keyboard shortcut. And it brings up these control handles. Now I want to pull this out from the center. So hold the alt key down. Grab this corner down here and pull this out. And you see how this pulls that line out? And when I let go, it's going to be moving that text to that line. Now I want to have the capital letters just touching that gray line. And you can't see it exactly here. So try to just visualize it. And I think right about here looks pretty good. Let go, hit that check mark. And I'm close, but not exact. Maybe a little smaller than that. So same thing, control T. Hold the alt key down. Just move that in just a little bit. Hit that check mark. And there we go. That's good placement for the bottom line of text. Let's now bring back our top text, and that's this whole big thing. Let's move to that layer, triple click. That selects all that. I'll hit the delete key to get rid of that extra text we don't want. And let's put our top text in. I'm calling that Twin Palm Camera Club. Hit that check mark. So we now have our text correct on the top and correct at the bottom. And they're both touching that circle, so they're lined up properly, the same amount of space. We can now hide that gray circle. And we're just seeing that black circle and you see our text now is looking perfect in there. You're still seeing a line in here because that is the line for that text shape. Okay, next I want to have another shape in here, another circle that comes out just beyond this. Now I don't know exactly what that size is, so we'll do this by dragging that circle. Come down here to the bottom shape and I want to have my circle in behind this one. So let's come down here to the background. We'll put our circle right here. Let's go back to our elliptical shape. Change your color to anything else. It doesn't matter. I'll just choose this thing right here just for a placeholder. Let's change the size here to circle. It still says from center. That's correct. Make sure you're still on that background layer. And then bring your cursor right over those guidelines and position your crosshair right on the guideline. It's like right here. Click and drag. It drags from center. And pull it out so it's just a little ways past your text. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let go. And there's that circle in behind the text. Now we have that position. We're going to be changing our colors in here. We'll change the text color first. That's our top text up here. Go to our type tool. Choose that top layer. Triple click on your text. And then come down here to color and just change this to white. And choose OK. The bottom text, which is right here. Back to our type tool. Triple click. And then change the color over here to white. And choose OK. There we go. There's our text has been changed. Let's now change the color of this blue ring around here. And that's this shape 3. So go on to shape 3. Make a new layer above shape three. And we'll use this layer here. Reset our colors here to their defaults. Click on the little icon right here. Put some at their defaults. Go up here to this tool. This is your gradient tool. And you should be on this gradient right there. Just the black to white at the front. Now we're going to change that. But this is our starting point. On the left side, this will be our dark color. Click on that color stop. That's where that dark color is. And then click on the color swatch right here. And then I found a nice blue already. Just type into the hexadecimal spot right down here. This is going to be 01258D. It's kind of a medium dark blue. Choose OK. Now go over to this side here. Click on this color stop. Go back to that color swatch. Back down here to the color picker. And this time we're going to be typing in 0BBCFF. 
It's kind of a light cyan. She's okay. So it's basically a medium dark to a medium light blue gradient. When you pull your gradients, it pulls from the left-hand side and goes to the right-hand side. So I'll choose OK. I want to have this dark down here. So we'll start down here. We'll pull up this direction. And I want to go at an exact 45 degree angle. Come down right over here somewhere at a little ways outside, maybe about as wide as that blue. Come over here, hold the Shift key down, and then drag this way. That makes it a perfect 45 degree angle. Go about the same amount of space up, let go. And here's that gradient. And it's on this layer here. Now at this point, we're not seeing anything on this layer over here. And that's a fault that sometimes happens inside of Photoshop Elements. We don't see our previews. So I'm going to fix that real fast. And you do that by simply closing down and reopening your file. And you'll then see that preview. So let's save this up here. Go up to File, come down to Save As. And I'll put it right inside my working folder here. And I'll call it Text Circle. Choose Save. I can then close this down. And we'll reopen it. There's our coconut tree. We'll get back to that in a little bit. File, Open Recently, Text Circle. And we'll dock that again. And notice here we now see that over here right hand side. That's just a little glitch that's happening right now. For whatever reason, that comes and goes in some versions of Photoshop Elements. But it's happening here in 2024. It also happened in previous versions on occasion. Now right click on the name and come down to Create Clipping Mask. And it takes this layer and puts it inside of the contents of that layer. In this case, it takes this gradient and puts it inside of that circle. We now have a nice gradient on that circle. Let's now put a bevel around that. Come down here to Shape 3. That's your Shape Layer. Go up to Layer. Come down to Layer Style, Style Settings. And click on Bevel right here. We want an Up Bevel. That's light on the top. And set this one for 15. And you can see a little bevel happening in there. It's a little thin one. And then change your lighting angle over here to 140, which moves that so the light source is upper left-hand corner. Just a little bit of a bevel in here, a little bit of a shadow right down there. And choose OK. If you want to, you can do something fancier by coming down here to Styles and choosing a fancy style in here from Bevels. There are a lot of these, but I'll leave that as an option for you to play with. Let's we'll stick with our basic one. Let's now put a little drop shadow on this. You can do that over here. Go over to the right hand side. We now have this little FX. That means that there's a layer style on here. Double click on that. That brings back up that layer styles dialog box. Click on Drop Shadow. And here I'll leave the size alone. This is simply the softness of the edge. The higher the number, the softer the edge is, the lower the heart of the edge. Seven to default, and that's fine. Let's set our distance here at 1, 3. And here's our little edge right there, a little shadow right in there. And choose OK. Now you can actually see through that. It'll be real nice on top of anything we put this on top of. If we hide the background, you can see here's our transparency. You can see that shadow, just a little bit of shadow right in there. OK, let's now get to work on our pictures in here. And the first thing I want to do is to bring in the palm tree. And I have that already opened up down here in my photo bin. I'm just going to drag and drop that in. Here's where the drag and drop comes in handy with a floating window. This is where I use that. Just drag it in, drop it like that. And it goes into our picture. And I'll place that oh, in here someplace. It's a little large. So I'll use the Control T keyboard shortcut. There's our control handles. Pull the right side corner down just a little bit. And I think right about here looks pretty good. Let's make a copy of this, right click. Duplicate Layer, choose OK. I want to flip this layer, the top one. Go up here to Image, Rotate, and come down to Flip Layer Horizontal. It just reverses it, and I'll stick it over here somewhere. And then Control t again for our control handles. Bring that down in size a bit so it's a smaller palm tree. I've got two sizes of palm trees. Choose OK. Select both of those layers. Click your top one. Hold the Control key down. Click your second one. You can then position it wherever you want. I think that's workable. OK, now come down to your Shape Layer. I want to put a gradient inside of this as well. So for that, same trick, make a new layer above that circle. Let's go back over to our gradient tool. And this time we'll use one of the ones that's built into Photoshop Elements. Click on the gradient icon right down here. Then choose that one. It's kind of a chrome sky thing. And choose OK. And in both of these I have mine set up linear. It's the default setting. Then come into the middle here someplace. Hold the shift key down so it pulls straight. Pull it straight down just outside. And there we go. You can go over here, right-hand side, right-click where it says Layer 3, and Create Clipping Mask. It puts that inside of that circle. There we go, looking really nice. Now, I want to fix this bit so we don't have these two overlapping bits of sand down here. That will be on this layer right here. I'll do this with a layer mask. Let's make a new layer mask like that. With a layer mask, white shows, black hides. You see the whole thing right now because it's all white. So I'll put black on this. Go over here, choose our colors, reverse the color. Grab the paintbrush. I have mine set at a fairly small hard edge brush. Then I use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. There we go. Now I can then come in here and just click on that 
white line like that. Just do it real carefully. And I'm painting a little bit of black onto the layer mask. It hides that bit. And I can then just paint along here. I'm just hiding that edge. The reason I'm using a layer mask instead of an eraser is in case I mess up with the layer mask, I can go back in and use white paint to put it back on again. So it makes it so it's easily fixable. With an eraser, you kind of lost everything once you erase it. You have to go back and undo and things like that. But this is perfectly fixable. Okay, let's come down here. Let's get the edge of the palm tree, which is like that. And I'll find where that edge is. Let's bring it down. There's the bottom. Let's kind of find that like that. And let's go up this side. And right in here, get this middle section. That all cleaned in. So there's our back palm tree. There's a little spot right here. And a little spot right there. I want to hide those two spots. So I'll reverse my colors to white. Still on our foreground layer. And it's going to just do a little bit right here. And a little bit right there. And there we go. That looks good. That fixes the palm trees. Okay, next thing. I want an outline around this circle in here. At about the same thickness as the outlines of those graphics. It's on our shape layer. At the move tool. Go up here to layer. Come down to layer style. Style settings. And this is going to be a stroke. You want this on the inside, you want white, so click on your color swatch here. Set this to white, click out here, and it's full upper left-hand corner. That's a pure white. Now let's bring this up. I've got real large. You can see there it is. There's that white line. And I'll bring it down to just about matches. Looks like about six is pretty good. Maybe up one seven. I think seven looks real nice. Just a little thin line to match the lines around the palm trees, and she's okay. So there is our basic logo. We now want to have this on top of a picture. First off, I'll use the control zero to fit screen again. That's going to see the whole thing. Let's now hide that background layer. Go up here to the top layer and hold down this keyboard shortcut. It's the shift control alt and then tap the E key. And what that does is it takes all of these things and merges all that up onto one layer at the top. If I hide all this stuff, you can see how that's now working just fine. It's all here on the one layer, which means I can now put something else behind that. So I'll come down here to this layer and also get a picture that I found and recent. And it's right here. It's called Pink Beach. Again, floating window, which makes it easy. I just grab this and drag it over here like that. And it drops it on the layer underneath that. So the logo is now on top of that photograph. And I'll just put this upper left-hand corner. Control T to bring up my control handles. And I'll pull this down until it fits. There we go. I can then go back and forth to find a good spot. I think right here is real nice. I just hide that umbrella back in there. And there it is. There's our text on a circle. And again, if you want to have all these images that I used in this one, I have those for members of my channel, and you get that by getting the HTG Photo Coach program. And you can get that right here. And this is a great tool when you're working with video training in that you can ask it a question or do a search for anything that you want inside of Photoshop Elements, and it will bring up text-based articles on how you do that. So it's great for all those questions you have when you're working with video training where you want something answered that wasn't really quite answered in the video or you want it expanded upon and wasn't expanded. All of that is in this tool, which makes it much easier to use video training. It's also a great tool just to have with you whenever you're working inside of Photoshop Elements and you're learning the program. So if you have that, then you're automatically a member of my channel and you get access to the graphics from this image and also the finished Photoshop file. This whole file here is also included there as a download, along with a step-by-step -step set of instructions for this video. And you'll find that in the projects section of the photo coach. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss any videos. Make sure you also hit that bell icon to get notifications of when my new videos go up. And I'll see you next time.